So Marie is my close friend from Malawi, and I asked her to come to the to this uh, event, and luckily she was able to make it. So let her get right to it. <laughs> I could use this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much, Darius, for having me here today to share my story. Um, I got a note with me. So, first of all, I'll start by just giving you a little uh, background about myself. And then I have a, a five minute uh, clip that I'm going to show after I speak. Um, um, I have been um, a nanny for the past 19 years here in America, and I've taken care of more than maybe 14, 15 children in my time. And, uh, and uh, whilst I was here working as a nanny in 2002, um, I heard my mother in Malawi uh, say that a school in my village which was housed in a Baptist church, was going to close. Uh, the reason being that the Baptist church needed its premises back and that there were 50 kids in the school and there were orphans. Among these children were two of my niece and nephew. And in our area, in our village, there were no schools that these children could go to. My niece and my nephew were orphans because um, from... Uh, 14 members of my family having died of AIDS. And this includes my father and my two brothers, their wives and their children. So I come from a family with a history of many members of my family who have died of AIDS. So when I heard this um, in 2002, I um, then thought, what, what could I do? Um, I'm working as a nanny and I don't earn as much. But I said to my mom, how about if we open up our house that I was raised in? Because in this house, uh, she was renting that out. Because when my father died, he had not left her an income or didn't have a pension or anything. So she was literally taking care of herself with this money that she was renting, um, getting from the rent. So I told my mom that I would reimburse her the rent from my salary that I earned as a nanny, and she agreed. I did this because I really felt that, A, my niece and nephew had to be in school. But mother, I come from a family of 10, and each and every one of us is educated. I'm a nanny by choice. I graduated from the City of London Polytechnic as a marine insurance broker. But I chose to be a nanny by choice. So I really, and this was the upbringing that my mother had for each and every one of us. Education is important. And I felt that these children, with my niece and nephew, they needed education. This was, only, this was the only way out of the situation where they were in and out of poverty. So I did that. We took the 50 kids in. They were studying in my bedroom, in my living room, in my dining room, the kitchen we turned into a, 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 a teacher's staff room. And each year I sent a third of my wages to take care of the school, to pay the teachers, buy school supplies. In the beginning, we had no desks. I, I painted the walls black to use as blackboards. And I continued to do this. And each year, the numbers of kids in the school grew. Um, by the year 2007, we had 230 children studying in the garage, in the gazebo outside and 98% of them are orphans, orphaned by AIDS. AIDS at this point was taking away 10, um, 10 people an hour in Malawi. And this was in 2007. So within this time, I lived in New York with the families that I was working with. And I, a friend of mine came up and said, why didn't you start up a foundation? Because that will help you raise some money to take care of your mission. 
Yes, luckily, we opened a 501c. It was very difficult because I opened, I started that within the time that 9-11 happened. So it was very difficult for us to get a 501c because at that time, it was known that uh, the terrorists were raising money to fund terrorists out of the country. So it was, it took us a lot of uh, months and persuasion, and uh, luckily I had a boss uh, who was uh, a celebrity who wrote letters and told them there at uh, the tax people, you know, they know me and uh, this is what I'm doing in Malawi, and they gave me the 501c. I sent out proposals to hundreds of people, but surprisingly nobody gave me any money. <laughs> it was only my personal friends that did so, and I did understand why. I was a nanny taking money from people and sending to Africa and telling people I have 230 children that I'm taking care of. Nobody believed that. So nothing happened, but I continued. At this time, there were no graduates in our school because I only employed student teachers. I could not afford to employ qualified teachers. The students failed, but I believed in keeping them in school because I felt that it was not their fault, it was me. I didn't have the means to give them that education for them to qualify and graduate. So I continued to keep them in the school. A friend of mine at some point in 2007 wrote to CNN and told CNN what I was doing. He said, I know a nanny friend, she uses her money to take care of orphans, she's feeding, she's, uh, you know, um, paying teachers and, and everything. So. Out of over 5,000 people, CNN chose me as a CNN hero of 2000, uh, one of the CNN, one of the 10 CNN heroes of 2008. <laughs> and then life completely changed. Because as soon as my profile went on CNN, February the 14th, 2008, money came in. You all trusted me. <laughs> yeah, it was now CNN, the most trusted name in the news. She is genuine. So I started receiving money from donations. What I did was I continued to pay the teachers and to fund the school with the money that I earned as a nanny because I had a purpose for that money. I saved each and every penny of the donations that I got because there were 230 children in my house it was too small. In fact, by this time, we, in 2008, we were 320. The house was too small. I needed to build a secondary school so that the primary can be in one place and secondary in another. And within eight months of my donations, which was, I received the donations in, in February 2008, October 2008, I opened a secondary school that I built. <laughs> so... I, uh, and then, at this point, I still kept the money and employed qualified teachers and bought textbooks and bought school supplies and bought desks and just equipped the whole school. Now, there were no graduates at all. The following year, 14 students took the examination, seven passed, and they all went to college. <laughs> Today, I am happy to tell you that we have 25 children in college. We have one in America who was sponsored to study here. And our first graduate this year started work with the International Bank of Malawi after completing two years in college. And these are all orphans. Every one of them is an orphan coming from the most underprivileged homes. These are the children that we give up hope on. In Malawi, you are cast out, especially if your parents have died of AIDS. And a lot of our children at our school, at, the, at this point around 39, 40 kids, are, were born with AIDS, are living with AIDS, and are studying at the school. When you are this way, they cast you away. They don't want to know you, they don't want to help you in most cases. But when we bring in these children and we believe in them, and we give to them their needs. You, they're, they're, they will amaze you. They will amaze us. And this is what they've done at Jacaranda. 
each year we are seeing these children who literally were begging on the streets for food, focusing in class, paying attention, studying and graduating, going to college and succeeding in getting jobs in Malawi. So um, that's my work. That is what I've been doing in Malawi. Um, Today, as I said, we are 400, I don't know if I said this, but we, were, we are 400 children at the school. And we have moved a step more than just education, because we are now providing nutrition and we are providing medical health. Uh, this is because of, we do have our children in our school who are from the ages of six, who are born HIV, all the way to uh, teenagers who are living with HIV. So we have to make sure, because there is no way they can come and study and be successful in school if they do not have uh, medical treatment. So my program t uh, today is, going, is uh, providing nutrition and medical treatment. But I, CNN, this was in 2008, so the money doesn't always come in. It kind of, kind of like goes, and the new CNN heroes come in, and they get all the, um, I think all the uh, viewers now donating to the next CNN he heroes. So of course, what do I do? I still go around speaking in schools. Uh, I quit my nanny job, which I'm not proud of because I did love being a nanny for the 18 years that I was a nanny. But I quit it so that I could focus 100% on the foundation and the school. Um, so, what, what has happened is now I've come to a point where we do need those funds to come in. I have 400 kids, but I came to a, a, I've come to a time in my life now where it says, okay, I am not going to go out and keep knocking at your doors and asking for money. I've got to find ways in which we can self-sustain ourselves at school. So this is the big project that I started last year in buying land in the village uh, converting that into a vegetable farm and now we have a chicken farm where we have 200 broilers and 200 um, layers which produces eggs, we sell the broilers, money comes back into the school and we put that money back. Uh, I mean we sell the, the produce and we put that money back into the school. We have started this project and we are seeing a success in it. <laughs> Um, I, but as you will see in the video, yes, it's the beginning of this. And in order for me to keep this going, I do need to have those funds to keep this rotating and to get the uh, garden a little bit bigger, the chicken farm a little bit bigger, and hopefully one day we will be able to sustain ourselves. And another thing is that the children are taught. The children are taught to the uh, agriculture. They work in the garden. They work on the chicken farm because for them too, they should learn that, yes, you know, it is not, we are just not being given things and we cannot just expect people to give us things all the time. We have to try to work for ourselves and, and do whatever we can and they do have that message and we're, we're doing pretty well. I will uh, not go on as much because I want to, um, I want to uh, go to the video, but uh, I'll just end up by saying we just got our results for this year's examinations and we are 89% pass rate in the school for primary and secondary school. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see if we'll get...